Hi, and welcome to video five of this six part series called Curious and Questioning. My name is Talia, and I'm an accredited mental health social worker at Mindscape Psychology and Allied Health. And this is a really important video focused on talking to the parents or carers or guardians of young people who might be questioning their gender or sexuality. And particularly this one is around how to advocate for your child and talk to other people about your child. So I hope you find this at least a little bit helpful. You are your child's biggest support. From telling their friends to telling your friends, family or school or navigating systems you play an important role in supporting and facilitating respectful conversations around your child's sexuality or gender diversity. This could be around coming out to others, creating spaces or environments in which they feel safe to express and be who they are, or standing up against bullying and discrimination. So you're not sure where to start? Well, I thought we could kick off with just some key things to think about. First off, let your child guide you through this by keeping them at the center of this process. You communicate your confidence and belief in them and that they are the expert on their own life and identity. You also build their capacity to advocate for themselves as well. Your role as a parent is to advocate for them and support them in the process of coming out to others, if and when it's appropriate. Important to remember though is that first and foremost, this is their identity and therefore it's their news to share or not share. So please respect their wishes. Everyone's coming out journey is different. There's no one way or right way to come out. You can also think about it as inviting in. This is a different way that people are starting to think about the idea of coming out. Where coming out sounds very big and public, like you need fireworks maybe, <laughs> inviting in might feel more comfortable as it can feel a little more intimate or special, bringing significant people into your child's world to share this important part of their life. And also it can feel like maybe there's a little bit more control over who knows what. So it's something to think about, the idea of inviting in. Support your child to explore their thoughts and feelings around coming out. Ask them about any worries they might have. And I know last time we spoke about the emotional roller coaster of processing all the feelings that come up for you, but also how to respond to what they're going through. And having come out to you now, you still might be getting the hang of how to respond when they talk to you. So when you ask them about any worries they might have, it's pretty simple. Validate and reiterate your support. Just be there. Problem solve if appropriate, but you know what? Where we go to problem solving straight away, we wanna fix it or solve it, particularly if children are in distress or, or we see them in pain. Sometimes problem solving isn't actually what they want in that moment. So ask them. They may just want you to be present and listen. Ask your child if they've thought about their coming out journey or process? Chances are they probably have. Ask them, who would they like to tell first? Who would they feel most com comfortable sharing it with? Who would they feel least comfortable sharing it with? Is there anyone that they don't want to know at all? For some people, they tell some family, but not others. Some people tell all the family, but not people outside the family. Other people come out to everyone. Sometimes it's in stages over time. 
coming out really is a process. Sometimes it's all at once. Tell one person, tell everybody. It is so different for different people and different families. So when you have this conversation with your child, talk about different people and different contexts separately. Different things will come up around particular relationships or particular settings. It's really important to just slow it down and just think about who are or what are the important people or things in your child's life. Different people to consider might be family members, your child's friends, your friends and, and people you might work with. When you're thinking about your child's friends, what about the friend's parents? Or you know, people you might see at school. What about the school? School includes teachers, year coordinators, school counsellors, principals. What about any clubs or groups? That might be social clubs, sports teams. And we'll talk about sports teams in a second. You know, there's a lot of other things to consider around name and uniform, if that's relevant. Perhaps there's religious leaders or religious groups or community groups, if that's significant or important in your life. Your child may want varying information shared with different people and maybe even different approaches or strategies for telling those people. The best guide for confidentiality, kind of a rule of thumb here, is this. Who needs to know? How much do they need to know? And will it help or benefit my child? I'm going to say that again because it's really important and kind of maybe an overarching principle for all this stuff. Who needs to know? How much do they need to know? And will it benefit my child? Talk about with your child how they'd like to tell people. Would they prefer to tell them themselves or would you prefer to tell other people? And that will be different for different contexts. Role play is a good strategy to practice telling different people. Literally play it out. Just play around with different ways of saying it, of what feels right and feels comfortable. Then you get the chance to kind of go back and do it all over again if it doesn't quite feel like it fits. There's a couple of other things I want to mention which are relevant particularly for trans or non-binary or gender diverse young people. This may be relevant to you and it may not. But names and pronouns, which I've spoken about in the previous videos. For your child, they may be the same. And it's not relevant, but it might be different. They might have a preferred or chosen name that's different to the name they were assigned at birth and or use different pronouns. She, her, he, him, they, them, ze, here, or others. And as I said, check, check back the uh, terminology and language videos, number one and two, which might be helpful. So those discussions around names and pronouns might need to be incorporated into the coming out discussion and conversation you have with people. And when you tell people about this, Ask them to respect your child's choice and refer to them in the name and pronoun that they feel most comfortable with. They being your child, not the other people you tell. This is your child's identity here. Yeah. So, a couple other things around school. School uniforms is one. Your child may no longer want to wear a skirt or they'd like to start wearing a skirt. For example. So talk to school about whether you need special permission to wear a different part of the uniform or perhaps bathrooms and change rooms at school. This has been a really topical one for quite a while now and a really important one. If your child would feel most comfortable 
using their identified gender binary. So they've come out to you, say for example, as identifying as a girl, and they'd really like to use the girls' bathroom. Some schools tend to deal with this by suggesting they use the disabled or accessible bathrooms or teachers' bathrooms in the common room. That can have really significant implications for further separating or differentiating adolescents who already feel pretty different or excluded or isolated. Using the bathroom congruent with their gender identity can affirm who they are and their place and inclusion in the school community. So this is one of those great opportunities for you to advocate for your child. Take the opportunity because this is where you get to really make a difference. I mean, you do the whole way through, but this is a really practical way that you can step in and say, hey, this is, this is really important for me and my child and my family. Another thing I want to mention it is out of the scope of this particular video, but it's another consideration that may come up somewhere along your journey is around names on documentation. So it might be informal or official documents, it might be um, teachers in a class or school records. You know, all those things are very different, whether it's a teacher just using a preferred name in class, but they don't agree to change it on the formal school records or things like that, you may need further discussions around. Later down the track, you might need to think about birth certificates or passports or health documentation. And I want to acknowledge that is a more complex area, particularly for young people under 18. So if you find yourself in that situation, navigating those things, talk to a GP or a specialist service and get some individualised advice on that. As I've said in my previous videos, this stuff can feel really complex and challenging to navigate, especially if this is a totally new area for you. So be gentle on yourself, take time to think about it and process it, but remember in the spirit of this particular video especially, advocate for your child. Centre them in the discussions. Let them be their own advocates. But with the wisdom of age and parenting and, you know, knowing your child as well as you do and committed to learning about them and knowing about who they are becoming as young people and young adults, really take the opportunity to advocate because this stuff can make a really big difference. So... Very practically, I really encourage you all to look at the resources that I will make available that go along with this video. Um, the first one being a guide for parents and carers supporting transgender, diverse and non-binary children at school, which is a brilliant resource. Both of them are this uh, week from Transcend Australia. Um, it's a brilliant resource, particularly for you, which gives some guidelines around all kinds of things. It might be... Uh, your child's rights and the school's responsibilities, or bullying or change rooms, sports and camps, considerations that you might really have to think about now. It even includes a sample letter from a principal to the school community that you might be able to use or tweak if you like. And the second part of the resources for this week is a guide for schools. So information on supporting trans, gender diverse or non-binary students to affirm their gender. And this is always something that in discussions with the school, you could always send to them and say, please check this out. I'd really like you to be up on these kind of issues and how you can support my child. Just want to note that um, this uh, resource, both these resources relate to Victoria. So some of the policies might be a little bit different if you're in New South Wales or another state or territory, but there's a lot of really relevant, really good information that you could find valuable as well. So, that is all for this video on advocating for your child. The next video is video six, which is the last of this series, all about being an ally for your child, showing them support, being involved in the community, all kinds of fun and exciting opportunities that you have now on board with your team as part of their cheerleading squad and what you can do um, to really allow your child to flourish as who they are. 
So I hope this has been helpful. As always, sending lots of love and support to all the young people, the families, the parents navigating all this stuff. It's really sometimes a little complicated, but actually at the end of the day, it's simple. You are parents, you love and support your children. Be there for them and advocate for them as best you can. Okay, take care, have a lovely day. I'll see you for the next video. Bye.